Welcome back. It's opening day of World Pork Expo, the 23rd World Pork Expo. We're at the Iowa State Fairgrounds in Des Moines. Joining us now is Sam Carney from Iowa and past president of the National Pork Producers Council. Good to talk with you again, Sam. You tell me that uh, even though you're now past president, things haven't slowed down too much for you. Been a lot of trips to Washington, a lot of uh, issues to ch and challenges for the industry that you're working on. You bet. Uh, we got a lot of issues. As every year, there seems to be uh, issues. You think you get some done, and next thing you know, you got more pop up. But uh, it's always a continued battle, and that's what our jobs is. So, let's talk about. GYPSA, the proposed GYPSA rule, very controversial. Some people feel so very strongly for it, think that it's long overdue, that it would be very helpful to the livestock industry. And then there's the other side. I know that uh, the National Pork Producers Council feels that it would actually be harmful to the industry, and you've, uh, you've been uh, outspoken uh, against that proposed rule. Kind of give us your thoughts on where it stands right now. Well, I'm going to go back a little bit. Uh, this rule was proposed. It came out uh, last June 22nd or 3rd. Uh, they gave a 30-day comment. We read this rule, and we're like, oh, my Lord, what do we got here? So first thing we did, uh, we sent a letter. We needed a longer comment period. It took a while, but we did get a longer comment period. Uh, we had uh, in Fort Collins, Colorado, we had over 50 producers that came in and talked. We had over 16,000 comments sent in by the comment period speaking uh, they did not like the rule. The rule was not good for the pork industry. That came from not only producers, but we had bankers, we had feed salesmen, we had all kinds of people involved in the industry that said, this is not going to work. Uh, we're very concerned. Uh, how do you lock in your profits? It doesn't say you can, it doesn't say you can't. The rule is so vague, we don't know what we, we can do. We've talked to many lawyers over the situation. The lawyers have said, well, we can fight this case either side you want us to. And it's like, well, we can't, we can't have a rule like this. So uh, we didn't get a cost analysis, and we were arguing we needed a cost analysis. Finally. I don't know if it was late December, early January, they decided they'd do a cost analysis. We are waiting for that. We don't anticipate that coming out till this fall. And uh, we're going to have to wait and see what the cost analysis is and then see what the final rule says. And then we'll go from there. Now, those that support it say, when you say what you're saying, that that just shows that you're controlled by the Packers and this would, you know, uh, the system favors them, and this would be a way to bring back, uh, you know, some advantage uh, to the small independent producer and, and give them a fair foothold in the marketplace. Why do you think it would be so harmful to the pork industry? Okay, I'm a small independent producer. Uh, today, pogs are around, uh, let's, we're going to take the maize over, but I'm going to say May, June, July, and August, we're all wor over $100. Today, I'm not sure, I haven't seen this morning's trade, but uh, we did have two months just at $90. The others are around that 88 Of course, May has come and gone, and June is about come and gone. But where can I lock those in? If I want, you know, some people can go and use the board of trade, which is fine. But bankers are saying, no, this is a high volatile business. We're giving you enough money. You lock that in with a packer. So if you can't lock that in with a packer, and the rule doesn't say you can, and it doesn't say you can't, so no one can say. But if somebody can prove that it was unjust, that maybe I locked mine in for, let's say, $95 for July, and somebody else got $85, uh, then they could, that could be, well, it's unfair and unjust. So the rule is so vague, nobody knows what to do. Bankers are very scared to loan money because they don't want their producers tied in lawsuits. So we've got to have some clarity in this. We've got to know what the rule stands. You don't write a law that is that vague. The laws need to be fully descriptive. Secretary Vilsack has said he won't pull it, but we've seen in the Ag Appropriations Subcommittee their, uh, their fiscal year spending bill, uh, no money in it for funding this rule, so it could be a moot point if it, it never gets funded, it could never get off the ground. Well, you're exactly right, and, and we all know the tight fiscal uh, situation that Washington, D.C. is in, and uh, we've all been told that it's easier to uh, not fund a bill that's never been uh, started than to uh, try to take money away from one that's already there. So we'll see what happens. Now, another controversy is kind of come back up now over country of origin labeling because Canada and Mexico filed challenges at the WTO. 
the preliminary ruling kind of indicates maybe WTO might side with uh, with uh, Mexico and Canada on that. What are your thoughts on country of origin labeling? Has it helped, hurt, or not made much difference for the pork industry? Well, uh, first of all, uh, when this first came up a few years ago, MPPC was against it. We did not see where the benefits outweighed the cost. Well, it became the law of the land. So when we become the law of the land, we follow the law. Now this has come up. We have not done a cost economic analysis since it went in effect. We've kind of waited to see. We're going to see when the final rule comes out. Usually when these come out, they get appealed. So we're just kind of a wait and see mood right now. Do you hear much comment or in, uh, you know, people saying, I'm glad we've got it or I wish it was different or or you hear it much at all about it? Uh, you really haven't heard much till it come out and everyone's saying, well, we better wait and see before we do a lot right now. But I have yet to see where the costs have outweighed the benefits. Talking with Sam Carney from Iowa, past president of the National Pork Producers Council. We talked earlier with Doug Wolf, uh, president of MPPC, about the free trade agreements that are now they're held up uh, in uh, Washington, kind of a political tug of war back and forth, both sides trying to get a little something here before they go for a vote. I know that's frustrating uh, because not only are we not gaining market share, but uh, we've run the risk of losing market share in those key markets. Well, you're exactly right. Uh, Columbia at one time was $1.65 a pig. Uh, now it's about $1.15 a pig. But if we could get all three of these free trade agreements, uh, South Korea, Columbia, and Panama, uh, it would be uh, over $11 a pig, which would help the industry, not to mention it would create 10,000 U.S. jobs. Uh, it'll help the overall economy, it'll help producers, it's just a win-win situation. Now you are, and the association, very closely um, in communication with the ambassador to South Korea. Are, are you hearing some frustration on their part that it's taking so long? Well, I'm going to meet Ambassador Hahn this afternoon at uh, 4.30. We're going to do an interview. Uh, we're going to meet him with the congressman. Uh, we're having uh, dinner tonight at the governor's mansion with him. And then uh, we're going to meet again in the morning for an, some interviews. And then he's going to be out here. So uh, I will uh, know more about that situation after uh, we get done with uh, Ambassador. That'll be interesting to see what what you uh, hear. We look forward to finding out uh, what their thoughts are on this. We kind of thought this was all set to go and going to head to Congress for a vote, and then everything kind of slowed down with the administration wanting trade adjustment assistance, and then the Republicans saying, well, then we're not going to approve your Commerce Secretary uh, designee, so it's kind of in limbo right now. Well, you're exactly right. And again, we're for the trade agreements. Uh, that's something they're going to have to work out. I hate to think that... Uh, the trade adjustments is going to assistance is going to hold up the hold this up. I think they will get it worked out. I think it will be voted on before summer recess, and I hope the latest it would be would be this fall. But I I am very confident they're getting this worked out, and we're going to get this uh, voted on this summer yet. Sam, a few years ago, it seemed like the main thing we talked about concerning the pork industry would, uh, was about environmental issues, environmental concerns, and how to address those. Uh, is, what's the focus there now for the industry, and how much progress do you think you've made? Well, things change. Uh, we all know what happened with Chesapeake Bay. Uh, now they're looking at the Mississippi River Basin. Uh, extremely concerned. Uh, I seen in Chesapeake Bay where a small dairy herd and a small turkey herd got put out of business. Uh, you know, we've got to use some common sense here. And uh, we, I'm just very concerned what, what could happen and uh, what's going to happen uh, along these rivers. Are, are we going to have less crop acres? We're a shortage of grain right now. Uh, that could hurt too. Uh, it could hurt the overall livestock industry and the feed visibility too. EPA, many would say overreaching, overregulating, uh, really a concern for all of agriculture. Exactly. It's just not the pork industry. It's all the livestock and the grain industry. It can hurt the overall economy of the agriculture. And agriculture is really the backbone of the country and is doing extremely well right now. So these are some of the issues you mentioned you have in common with other parts of agriculture that's why the pork industry is involved with the u.s farmers and ranchers alliance exactly uh, this group uh, got to cut together about a year ago right now actually we had our kickoff uh, last august 
<clears throat> or last October. Uh, it's where the groups all come together and uh, they speak of the great things agriculture is doing. Uh, we are one unit. We're all together. It can be anywhere from the uh, poultry, uh, the beef, uh, the grains. We're all working together on as one unit. So even you and the ethanol folks can get together sometime. Well, yeah, that could be possible. <laughs> We want, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother program. It's good to see you again. Uh, I know you ha you're happy with the turnout so far for World Pork Expo. This really is a showcase for your industry, isn't it? Exactly. It's where all the producers can come see the latest and newest things. It's where uh, people come from all over the world. And it's us to showcase uh, U.S. pork. Uh, we're the cheapest uh, exporter and we're the number one exporter of pork. We ship more than anybody else. So it's a great showcase for U.S. pork. It really is, and it's an educational time uh, for producers. It's also a great promotional time. There are a lot of things going on to, uh, to get that pork message out there and, and deal with these issues that we've been talking about here on the program today. So good to see you again, Sam. Stay busy and uh, have a good year. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about the pork industry. Much appreciated. Sam Carney from Iowa, past president of the National Pork Producers Council. As immediate past president, staying plenty busy representing the pork industry. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to learn more about the We Care initiative. We've talked about this in the past. It was launched in 2008 by the National Pork Producers Council and the National Pork Board to help communicate uh, the pork industry's uh, message uh, to the public and build trust in the pork industry. We'll talk about that next uh, with the president-elect of the National Pork Producers Council. Stay with us. From World Pork Expo, this is Agritalk.